Okay, so maybe five minutes on shooting and editing, and then I'll take questions. Do you guys want to talk about shooting and editing? Okay. Because one thing I will notice is, is it's, you know, you're not going to get necessarily graded on it, but it's really hard to have people hang with a dot, uh, visual medium if it really doesn't look good. So I come from photography. That's what I studied. And then I looked over and the producer had a clipboard and I had 35 pound camera and I thought, <laughs> he's smarter. So I got into producing. I'm going to, I'm going to discuss interview lighting and setup. Because with history, you end up doing the sit-down interview. You don't have to. You can have them standing on the podium. And you can have them walking. It provides motion. It just is a little harder to control. So you've probably heard of three-point lighting. But essentially, what three-point lighting is, this is a man we're looking from the top, is there is a key light that hits their face and lights both eyes so that you're not half in shadow. If you can see by this direction, you're going to get both sides. But allows a little shadow because we are 3D. And we shouldn't try to light it in such a way that we have no definition. Here's your camera. Now, cameras, if you're doing an interview with another person, you have to have that there. You can, I don't know why there's a tradition of not staring right at the camera except that the best definition I've ever come up with, the only time that happens is when somebody's trying to sell you something. So maybe that's why we don't do it. So you have them looking. Notice the camera's a little off. Here's your question answer person. And so they're, they're actually looking a little off camera. This is your key. And then you can either have a light or go to Home Depot and get one of those white styrofoam cards. Um, you know, the foam filled ones that are bright white and put it on a chair or if you really want to spend money, get a stand and some clamps and, and then just look in here. This will be bright, bright, bright. This will be too dark right now. But if you put that card here, it picks up this light and bounces off that. You want this to be about a third or two a half of the luminance of this side. And what it does is it just gives it a nice, and you can literally just walk the card up, walk the card back, and have your camera person go, yep, yeah, that's it. Now obviously, when you shoot, you don't want to see the card. So you're shooting there. I have done things where I got the card right up there. Now you have to watch it on these cameras too, because a lot of cameras, you think you don't see it, and then you get in the edit room, boop, there it is. So push, you know, cheat a little bit, get a little tighter. Then because it'll, it'll show up. And then that's your fill, because you are filling in what, from your key. And then lastly, and this is a tough one, is this is the backlight. Why do you want a backlight? Because it defines the third dimension, the, uh, the x, y, z axis, one of those axes. So a little light coming from the back gives you the form. There are a lot of different ways to do that. You can put a little light. Notice you still have to keep it out of the shot. So you really, it ends up being this way. And you don't want it too hot, but that, you know, when you see news anchors and they just, they look angelic because they got that little silver lining, that's your backlight. <laughs> now, there are different ways to do that. Maybe you don't have three lights. Maybe you have one. Maybe you have none. Some of the best lighting in the world are people that come into rooms and they choose the right room. So another way to do it, I'm going to do two quick diagrams here. This is a window, and this is a window, and this is a room. The sun is over here somewhere, <laughs> so there's light coming through. And guess what? If you notice, if you go into a room and think about light, you'll see where there's a nice little bit of light coming in here. Sometimes in Arizona, it's enough to burn things, <laughs> but, so you have to kind of watch it. But that with your white card, and you're almost there. Because you sit them somewhere like here. Here's his nose. Here's our camera again. And here's our dude. Now, the other thing is you could put the camera on this side, too. One of the things I like, and you'll see other people go the other way, is I like if you're looking at a person 
and they're facing kind of this way. I like the light to come in here because this is the active part of the frame. They are looking into an open place and that's where it's happening. This, nothing's happening back here. That's behind them. So this, I always feel, is my dark, darker area. So if you put them here, the light comes in here. This is dark by nature's design, but look at that. You got another window back here. Why do you need one? Because if I'm shooting across this room, I would like to reveal that we're in some place other than a shut down department store. You know, there's, and you can play with it too. You can put a lamp back there. <laughs> it's amazing how many lamps show up in shots. Believe me, they don't, they're usually not just there. You look around and go, that's a nice lamp, and you put it over there. So now you've got this shot. I would probably do it from this side. That is like here. And guess what? Why did I choose this big building? Remember the shot of the guy in the church? The, when you focus and light appropriately, the back of the church is a little out of focus, which makes them pop out. So look for, in a room, depth. I look for depth, available lighting, and lighting I don't want anything to do with. What is lighting I don't want anything to do with? You get into a room and it's like nothing but light, and it's going to change. You got to look at the sun and say, uh-oh, in 20 minutes I'm going to have nothing in here. So what do you do? You draw the shades, you turn on your little lamp, you throw a light there if you want, you don't have to, and then you do your lighting. You still have your depth, now the lamp. It's a little out of focus. And that's how they get all that. The other thing, the other way they get that is you move your camera. People always put their camera right next to the dude. You don't have to be there, right? You put your camera as far back from this person as you can, which means you're always bumping into walls, but that's okay. And what happens when you zoom into somebody to frame is the effect of this out of focus thing increases. It's called... Um, Depth of field. So if you zoom in and lock down, the chances of everything behind them being out of focus greatly increases. And that's how people get that nice out of focus thing. It, it's not magic, it's just moving the camera back. And besides, you make your person less nervous than if you're right up here trying to shoot. 